today's video, I'll be going over how I've set my X100V up for street photography and everyday documentation. A lot of you have been asking me what my settings are on my X100V, and I figured I'd update you all on that and kind of go through the key things that impact the way I shoot doing street photography with the X100V. These aren't the best settings for street photography by any means, and this isn't me telling you that you should use these settings. This is just what I use and what works for me. At the end of the day, settings don't really matter as much as your ability to notice images and just being comfortable enough with your camera to take a photo of that moment when you see it. But understanding your camera and how it works can really benefit you and help you do what you want your camera to do. So I still think videos like this can help people out, especially if you're trying to understand your camera for the first time and find something that works for you. You can play around with these settings, um, switch them out if it doesn't work for you, but don't feel like you need to use these settings just because I use them. Before I get started, a quick plug for myself. Uh, my, my presets are still on sale and I've extended that sale to January 9. So if you still want to get my presets while they're on sale, uh, you have until January 9 to do that. Okay, I figured we'd start with the function settings and how I have the button layout on my camera set for street photography. So one of the first settings under function is focus lever and I have that set to lock. Uh, the focus lever is this little knob thing on the back side of the camera. You use it to like navigate the menu, but it can also be set as the focus point in how you move it around. I have it set to lock because I don't move the focus point at all. I just keep it in the center of the camera. It's not a big deal for me because I aim that camera and focus on what I want to focus on. And then if I want to recompose my image, I'll do that after I have focused on that thing. But the main reason really is because I accidentally hit this knob all the time when I'm holding my camera and I just don't want my focus point being shifted around accidentally. There are times when I've had this setting on and I've accidentally moved that auto focus point and it basically led to me missing some shots. So yeah, I have this set to lock in that prevents me from moving my focus point by accident. Next is the first function button, which is next to the shutter. I have this set to my photometry settings, and this is a great place for me to have my photometry because I frequently switch between spot metering and matrix metering, uh, depending on if I'm wanting to you know, expose for my highlights or my shadows, I'll switch to spot. Or if I want an average exposure of the whole scene, I'll go to multi. So since this is something I frequently use, I have it set to this button, which is easy to access. I think that's important to note that the settings that you use the most on your camera should be the most accessible to you. You don't wanna have to dig into a menu setting to change your, your metering mode or shutter speed or whatever. Uh, because the second you go into a menu system, you're just wasting so much time when you know that moment in front of you, if you're you know, trying to quickly do this, it's already passed. It's nice to have this ability to quickly change my meter or how I meter with this button. Next is the rear dial. Uh, well, you can press into this button and I have that set to my auto ISO settings. And this is something I frequently use a lot too because I shoot in auto ISO for a lot of the time and I want to have my parameters set for what my base ISO and max ISO will be depending on the available light around me or the time of day. So I'll quickly go over those auto ISO settings. So the first setting is basically my daylight setting. Uh, I have my base ISO set to 160, the lowest it can go, and a maximum of 400. This is what I'll use if I'm shooting in harsh light or daylight. But if I need more control over my ISO or a little more leeway in how high my ISO can go, I'll switch to my second setting, which has a base ISO of 160 and a maximum of 800. I also use this setting a lot for an overcast day. And then finally, my last one, which is for night and indoor photography. I have my minimum ISO set to 250 and the maximum going up to 3200. You might have noticed I didn't mention the shutter speed setting, uh, and that's because it doesn't matter because I'm always changing the shutter speed to whatever I want since I'm shooting in manual. I have this front function button set to my focus check uh, that comes in very handy many times. And for focusing in general, I have set to back button focusing. So I have the AE 
L A F L button set to A F on, which basically lets me focus uh, using the back button. To turn off the shutter autofocus, you'll want to go over to button dial setting, shutter A F, and turn off both of these settings. I have my touchscreen turned off, so that's why you see all these function settings with nothing applied. While it's nice to have touchscreen functionality, I just can't seem to use it without accidentally changing something or hitting the touchscreen. For aperture adjustment, I just use the aperture wheel that's on the lens. It's the easiest and simplest way to do it for me. Um, but for shutter speed, I have been using the back uh, rear dial um, to do that takes away from the experience or the analog experience of using this camera a bit, um, a lot actually. Yeah, I just find it a lot more reliable if, if I'm doing, you know, run and gun street photography. To get full shutter speed control on this rear dial, uh, you have to set your shutter speed dial to T. So that's basically the gist of how I have the buttons and function settings set on my camera. Let's get into image quality. I think I've mentioned this before on the channel, but I always shoot raw. However, that doesn't mean I don't use Fujifilm simulations on this camera. You can actually still use Fujifilm simulations in how the image looks through the camera. I have mine set to Astia, which I've recently been enjoying a lot. Uh, I just like the vibrant, soft colors that come out of that simulation. And, you know, I used to use classic Chrome all the time, but I'm frequently using Astia more now and I like it. Some other settings here, uh, white balance I have set to auto and dynamic range I have set to auto as well. Pretty simple for image quality. Um, yeah, let's go over to my autofocus settings. So for autofocus modes, I'm always shooting in single point autofocus. Since I'm shooting in manual and I have control over my aperture, I'm usually shooting at higher apertures anyway. So most of what I'm taking a photo of is going to be in focus. Something I recommend everyone to do, no matter what you're taking a photo of, that's pre autofocus. This basically means your camera's always focusing on everything. You know, every time you move the camera around, it's gonna focus on something. That might sound helpful, but it's not. Uh, autofocus illuminator set to off for maximum stealth, of course. I have autofocus and manual focus set to on, and that lets me have a little bit of more control over my focus. So I can override the autofocus and go into manual focus if I need to with the focus wheel. And this actually comes in really handy if I'm taking photos of something that has a reflection on it. So if I'm shooting through a window or glass or something, and you know how there's multiple layers to that when it's a reflection, the camera might not really know what you want it to focus on. So in that kind of scenario, I'll first focus with the back button focus, and then finally tune it to what I want to focus on with the focus wheel. So that about wraps up my settings for my X100V. Uh, as you can tell, a lot of this stuff is down to personal preference. Uh, not everything here is probably going to work for you or fit your personal needs. But if you're still trying to get to know your camera, play around with these settings. It's all about getting comfortable with your camera and your settings so that you don't have to keep changing them. We wanna get our cameras set to a point where we can just forget about the settings and focus on taking photos. If you have any tips of your own or settings that work for you in street photography on the X100V, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Someone might see that and it might actually help them a lot. And I might see that and try, try it out myself. So please do that if you have any settings of your own that you'd like to share yourself. By the way, happy new year. Uh, I love you all. See you all in the next video. Peace.